-hmm. Hey guys, I'm so excited about this meet. Me too. I'm I'm super excited. Um, I think both of you were tagged in it. Oh, some one of the listeners who's also a guest on the show. This is their first meet since 2003. I think it's really exciting that people who would may not be able to have entertained the idea of doing something are now considered. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really what Chelsea and I've been trying to do with my gym judge is make it accessible. Um, and also like the whole make, make lemonade situation, right? Like normally you wouldn't have time to do these virtual meets. You wouldn't even think to do them, right? You'd just be going into gyms, getting scores, trying to get better. And what Chelsea and I have done with our virtual meets was we thought, well, if this is the only thing people can do, let's let's make it an opportunity. And so besides getting scores and getting awards and all of that, they actually get video feedback of their judges talking through their routines. They come out of our meet and don't just try to improve on their score, but they actually know how to improve upon their score. And we're bringing that to this adult meet, which is really exciting. Um, as far as it being accessible, I mean, we've got people that are going to be doing, you know, they have a wide beam set up at home. And so that's what they're going to do their routine on. So we, you know, we've all worked really hard talking about this, right? Like what, what can we offer that's not the run of the mill? So we've got vault bars, beam floor, we've got a wide beam event, and then we've got our 45 second exhibition, and which is just going to be so cool. I can't wait to see what people do. They get 45 seconds to show us whatever they want. I mean, we've got people who are going to be doing dance throughs of their floor routine in their yard. So they're not going to get scored on it because you can't really score what you don't know, you know, if you don't know what they're going to do, but they get feedback. So if you want feedback on your press handstand on your bridge, um, if you want to do some tumbling passes on a tumble track, um, all of those things are options to get feedback from Chelsea and I. And, you know, you don't have to do all around, which is another cool thing. You can just pick one event or two events or pick your two strongest just to, to see where you're at. So I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So really excited to see, you know, people's creativity and, and see what they're working on. And there will be people that are in a gym using the traditional events. Something else that's really fun about this is, you know, it's open to men and women. 18 and over we are for this meet only doing women's events with women's excel rules just because you know we want to keep it simple but i'm really excited i've talked to a, a bunch of guys actually in the last couple of weeks who are just trying to clarify the rules to figure out like what are they going to do on beam and what's their bar routine going to be for instance I, you know i talked to um, a guy today who was trying to understand like all right i mean i i, I can tumble but i don't know what to what, what do I do in elite pass, you know? And so when I was able to explain to him, you know, like for bronze, you need to do a 90 degree split. Um, he heard the word split and freaked out. And I said, if you hop over a puddle from one foot to the other, you're, you're probably going to hit 90 degrees. Just make sure your legs are straight. Like you're going to be okay. So, and we really want people to understand, like, don't be intimidated by, you know, the, the unknown. Cause we're really, um, the, these rules are really going to make it so that, Basically, anybody who's, who's got the drive to, to show up and do this is going to be able to participate. Yeah, Chelsea, I mean, what does it mean to you to be able to offer something like this to adults? I'm, I'm just excited. And it means, it means a lot just trying to, well, like you guys already said, just make it accessible. Because there, I know there's still, it just depends where you are in this country, where you are in the world, if you can get to a gym yet or not. So being able to you know, still show something or compete and get feedback. Um, even if you might not be in the gym at this moment, I think it's really cool. Um, so logistically speaking, you know, th there's a lot, it can be overwhelming, you know, for participants to go, but how does this all work? So we're actually going to be holding uh, some test sessions. So people can actually go to the event page and they can register for a time slot and they can test their camera angles. They can test their, make sure that they have a strong signal and also use it as an opportunity if they have any last minute questions. But Chelsea and I have been doing this not for a long time, but it feels like a long time because we've done so many under different circumstances. We've, you know, like I said, we've had, you know, one gym use us or we've, we've done international meets too. So we've figured out on our end, but now the trick is getting everybody else to understand that it's not going to be that difficult. Um, we will, you know, we'll do all the legwork beforehand and we want everybody to just show up and just worry about their gymnastics and not. It's happening in real time. So this is happening in real time. And, you know, the feedback videos people will get after the meet, the awards, the actual tangible awards they'll get after the meet, but the event is happening 
as it's happening, it's happening live. So another fun thing we're doing is including Better Late in this event. And Pam, you're going to be interviewing people based on the backstories that they provide us in their registration. So you're going to be like that commentator down on the floor um, after the performance. So what do you what do you have planned for that? The main thing is whenever I reach out to people about being a guest on the show, a lot of them, a lot of adult gymnasts don't feel that they have anything to say they're like oh well I wasn't I'm not an Olympian or I've never competed but I'm like just think about how few people in the world are doing gymnastics at an older quote unquote older age like just as adults or starting as adults everybody really has a story and some of the episodes from Better Late that have gotten the most traction have been from people whose stories that they can relate to and I mean they're or that they haven't heard before because they didn't make the news or they didn't compete at nationals or get to an elite level. And obviously I think those stories are fascinating too. But I think the main thing is like, what am I looking for? I mean, just somebody who's passionate about the sport. I think if anybody who is gonna sign up for this meet obviously has a passion giving up a Saturday to do a virtual meet as an adult, like what? <laughs> like try describing that to somebody who doesn't know that adult gymnastics exists. So like I said, I think everybody has a story that we can learn from in adult gymnastics. Definitely. And Chelsea, I mean, you've basically legitimized this whole concept of adults, not just being able to do gymnastics, but, you know, really finding, maybe not everybody's going to get a sky high to at you know, over 30 years old. But just the fact of going, hey, I'm going to commit to this thing and I'm going to ignite a passion in myself. And it's, it's legitimate, just like any other sport that adults do. I'm, I'm looking forward to see everything. I mean, I think a lot of what Pam said is just getting out there and doing what you love to do. And I, until I started like my journey, I didn't really realize fully how much people were like, why do you want to do gymnastics? Or why are you still doing gymnastics? Or you may not compete or you may not do this. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It, it's good for me and it makes me happy. Like I, I'm continuing to get more like irritated at those kinds of, of thoughts that involve gymnastics and why should we do it as adults? I'm like, how many golf places are around the country? How many golf courses are there and none of you are gonna go professional. You just go because you love it and it's good for you outside and you're hanging out with friends. Like I, I want to have gymnastics get to that point where it's not like, what? like why are you doing that? <laughs> um, so I think if we can continue to get more people involved and get the word out more and be able to have more events like these um, and just realize how, how much fun it is and getting back into it, it doesn't mean we're trying to, you know, chase our glory days. We're just doing something that we love. And I don't know why there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> it's because there's no ball involved. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> our specialty awards are going to be outside of that. Our specialty awards are going to be, um, you know, we don't really know until we see it, right, Chelsea? Like sometimes you see, um, you see an amazing save on beam. Or sometimes you just see a bar routine where, yeah, maybe it had it had a pause or they didn't quite hit the angle they were supposed to, but their shapes were really awesome. Um, a floor routine that's just really creative and artistic. So those are the types of things too that we want to make sure to acknowledge and point out because they're, you know, they're very important too. Oh, the other thing we want to make sure people know is the only the first 48 registrants are guaranteed a spot. So if you're even thinking about it, we encourage you to get in there, get yourself registered. 48 and we're, we're easily climbing towards that every single day. So, so <laughs> we really struggled with a name and then Pam all of a sudden just knocked it out of the park. So can you <laughs> talk about that? as far as the name goes, I, I was just, this podcast that I, it has really like made me reflect a lot on my own gymnastics journey and I was I was a little pissed off honestly when I was thinking about this 
And it's because that perfectionism that I learned even like in rec levels as a kid was still in me that there's like one linear way to do gymnastics and not so much what we learn as adults, which is like, whatever you can do, you work on, on that. But it also reminded me of, you know, I didn't know that this adult gymnastics community existed until a few years ago. When I competed as an adult 10 years ago, I had no idea. In 2004, I was 21. And until then, I had never done gymnastics for more than like an hour and a half stretch because that was all I could find in like classes around me. If you want to do gymnastics in a sense, just do it. I hate that we as adult gymnasts feel like we need to go to gym owners and ask for permission. Like it's such a, like we're committing a crime. This is good for us. This is physical fitness and activity. And if we can show that adults can do gymnastics, think how much better little kids in the sport will feel. So I just, just flip, like show up. You don't need access to a gym. You don't need to have full routines. Just yeah. Do what you can. No, I think that's such a great point. Like, <laughs> I feel like they've only got this little window to do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, I, so if I don't get it by the, you know, if I'm not level nine by the time I'm ten, then I, you know, it's never happening. Like, all of those things. So yeah, I think that's a great perspective of like they see adults doing it. It's like, okay, this is not. <laughs> yeah, maybe they can come back to it later. They don't have to worry about fitting into some narrative. You don't have to look a certain way, be a certain age, and. Um, Honestly, I mean, I just feel like short of doing anything illegal, you should do whatever it takes to, to do gymnastics. Just flip. <laughs> just flip. <laughs> Something that has come up in questions, you know, a lot of listeners of Better Late are international and in the UK or in Europe or anywhere. And they've asked, do they need to be in the US to participate? Because Excel is under like US rules, so to speak. Nope, nope. The only struggle with people outside of the U.S. is, and this is kind of more our struggle, is how do we find a time that's going to work for everyone? But on the other hand, you know, athletes travel to different time zones and, and adjust, you know, so that they can compete. Chelsea, you know a little bit about that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, no. So let's say somebody has never done a virtual meet. I think it's some, something that's pretty new to like 2020 or 2021. Yeah. How does that work? They sign in to, is it like through Zoom? And then is everybody, like whose videos will be on while, like say I'm the one doing my beam routine, like what will I see if I look up at my computer that's connecting me to the meet? Well, first of all, please don't look over at the computer while you're doing beam routine. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, no, that's a great question. And that's, that I'm sure that's what's on everyone's mind. So yes, it is done through Zoom. So all the participants will get a Zoom link and they just need to have any device that supports uh, Zoom to set up facing where they are. And they actually will bring that device from event to event. So once they log on to the meeting, there will be a host that will greet them. Welcome to the My Gym Judge, just flip adult meet. And they will be placed into what's called a breakout room. That sounds scary, but really you don't have to do anything. The host will actually place you into the appropriate room and you will find your squad. So just like at a regular meet, you're in a squad with people from different gyms. It's the same thing. You'll be in a, a private room called a breakout room and there will be a bunch of athletes there from all over the place and that's your squad. And you will go from event to event with your squad. For you personally, you will have your device. You'll be able to see all the different people in the squad. You'll even be able to see your judge, whoever your judge is for that event. It'll either be Chelsea or I. And then depending on the numbers, we may have two additional judges. And when you are competing, you just make sure that your device is set up to your event. When you're done, you can just look at the screen and you can pin the video of the next person that's competing so that you can watch them perform. Great. It's really easy. It's actually up to the judges to make sure that your video is the largest one. So we actually pin the video of the athlete that's competing. And then you, when you're done competing, you, you become essentially a spectator. You can pin and watch people. And then you'll have a breakout room um, for interviews as well. So you may be invited to the interview breakout room. And if you are, that means Pam's waiting for you. Three. Just, <laughs> Just flip. flip.